In games like Call of Duty, Team Fortress 2, or any other generic first-person shooter, they pretty much use a technique to detect if a bullet hits a target called ray casting. So this is the other method of shooting that I mentioned before with the bullet spawn. And, and as you can see, I'm missing, so I can't really tell if I'm hitting the target. Up oh, there we go. Awesome. So this is pretty much a laser tag kind of method, if you will, because this is what it really is. So if I were to play right now and just look in the scene right here, you can see this red line shooting out from the gun where I have the bullet spawn before, shooting off in the up direction. And I failed to mention this earlier, so I apologize for this. So the, the orientation that I have here with the bullet spawn is where you see that yellow arrow shooting out, you know, shooting out in the same direction as the ray as opposed to forward, which is the blue one. Uh, you'll see that why that relates to this and when I show you the script. So if you see me move my gun over, let me just move the game view over so that way you can see. So I'm going to move the, bear, the laser pointer and aim it at that target right there. So you can see like the rays moving and there. So if I were to shoot right now, it disappears. The only difference I made since the last method where you create a model, in, that, in which case I had just a yellow sphere that shoots out of the barrel, is this only requires like one script. Of course, again, this is not the only way. With programming, there are multiple ways to have the same results. So in the first person controller, I have a new script called laser gun and I'll show you what it does in a second. So it's pretty much similar to the previous method. So just like before, I find the bullet spawn game object. That's where the laser will be shooting out from and I find it first. So in the update, this is where I did something different. Same thing before you get the user's input. So you got the mouse button one. So I click on the mouse button. And then I have a special variable here called raycast hit. So this is pretty much a variable that will give me information about what did I hit with the laser. In this if statement, I'm actually firing my laser, my ray, and shooting it out from shooting out from the bullet spawn position and shooting out in the direction of the bullet spawn. So like I mentioned earlier, that yellow arrow Usually you might see somebody else put like forward, but in the way I have it on the player, it's pointing out in the up direction, the, the green arrow, the yellow greenish arrow. This is a special parameter. So what did it hit? It needs to store into a variable. That's why I have a variable here. So that way it can give me all the information here. So you need to have some kind of container or a variable that stores the information of what you hit. And math.infinity is how long is my laser. So it doesn't it doesn't stop like a lightsaber where there is an actual length. This one just shoots out, you know, forever, indefinite. You can of course change the distance of the laser here. If I hit the target, which I had it set to having a tag called target, then I want to destroy it. So in the previous method, I have a second script or the bullet that says if it's if it touches anything if it collides with any other collider destroy the bullet and the target if it did hit the target but i have it here in the same script and as a little bonus here debug.drawray will allow me to see where the ray is firing where it's looking at the direction and everything so i know where the starting point is I know the direction that it's looking at. So again, that yellow arrow, and I have it multiplied by a hundred. So that way I can see a huge laser coming out from the bullet spawn, the barrel. And I have it colored red, like you saw before in the demo. So if I were to test this out again, and let's just take focus on the scene view here. So I'm playing down here and you can see the, the red ray in the scene. So since the target overlaps the ray, I can fire and make it disappear. So if I can aim correctly, that's good. That's like a bullseye right there. And 
still hitting the wall. There we go. That's a bullseye right there. That's it for ray casting. I hope this helped you out understand more about ray casts. It probably help you get the firing mechanic to work. Please like if this helped you out. And subscribe if you want to see more of these kind of tutorials. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.